Are you thinking about moving to the Seattle, Washington area? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of King County. King County is where Seattle is located. That way it can give you an idea of some of the cities surrounding Seattle and where, you know, it might be the best place for you to move to. If you're not looking specifically to be in Seattle, but you want to be relatively close in one of the surrounding King County cities, hopefully this video, walking through the map here, will give you an idea of what the best spot for you might be. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel here so you don't miss any of my future videos. People just like yourself reach out to me here from YouTube all the time when they're moving over here to Seattle. And I love helping you guys out. So if you're moving over here, you're looking to purchase a home, you need to find the right place uh, to move yourself or your family to over here in the Seattle metropolitan area, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. Be more than happy to help you out. As I am an active real estate agent, I can help you with that home buying process. But like I said, on today's video, I wanted to talk about King County as a whole. So Seattle, Washington, located right in King County. Um, and then there are plenty of cities surrounding Seattle, also within King County, that provide to be some great places to live. So if you're starting your exploration of moving over this way, you've probably, you know, there's a good chance you haven't narrowed down exactly what city you want to live in. So hopefully this video will help provide some clarity on what some of the best spots might be for you to live for what you're looking for. So like I said, in order to do that, I want to jump into the map here on my computer and just kind of show you around these areas a little bit, give you an idea of what it might be like to live here. So let's jump into my computer here, into the map. So you can see we've got Seattle right here in the middle. Um, so King County, up on the north side, the border here is Shoreline and Bothell. That's the very north tip of King County. Coming down south here, you've got Federal Way and Auburn on the south side. So you've got all this in between here in King County. Biggest county in the state of Washington. There's a lot of people that live here. Um, so, you know, there's a lot that is offered here in King County, which is why it's so popular, why so many people love living in this area, not just Seattle specifically, but so many of the other surrounding cities here in King County. So to give you an overview, right here on the left side of Seattle, you can see on my screen here, that is the Puget Sound, of course. So uh, beautiful views, some great parks and beaches on this side, on this west side by Puget Sound. Just on the other side of Seattle, this is not King County over here. This is the peninsula, so you've got Kitsap County, uh, Island County up north up here. So, um, but right here in Seattle and King County, you've got some great views being here on Puget Sound. Um, in the middle here between Seattle and Bellevue, this is Lake Washington right here. So this is our largest lake in the area. So if you want to go boating, you want to go wakeboarding, water skiing, uh, take the kids tubing behind the boat, take out the jet skis, go fishing. Um, I'm sure there's tons of other stuff you can do on the lake there. Bring out a, a kayak or canoe, go paddle boarding. I mean, there's just tons of stuff you can do here on Lake Washington. So as you can see, it's spread pretty far. It's spread to the very tip of King County on the north side, like I said here, and it goes all the way almost down to Renton. So it's a huge lake. There's lots to do here on the lake in the summertime. Take advantage of our beautiful summers here. But that lake is what separates Seattle from what we call the east side. So the east side, is right here. This is Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Sammamish, Issaquah. This is what we consider the east side. So if you hear that term, that's what it's referring to. And then you've got another lake right here, Lake Sammamish, a little bit smaller, but still a pretty big lake um, when you compare it to all the other lakes around here. It is still a very large lake, Lake Sammamish, so you can do all the same stuff, bring out the boat, the jet skis, all that kind of stuff here on Lake Sammamish as well. So there's a lot of opportunities for recreation still being here just within King County. There's some little hikes as well. You don't have to go super far out to the to the mountains to go hiking. So there's some of that stuff in here too. So let's just start on the north side here, work our way down south so we can give you an idea of some of these neighborhoods, what it might be like to live over here. So we're gonna go over a shoreline here, North Seattle area. Um, so as you, you know, I, I-5 obviously runs north and south. And then you've got uh, Highway 99 right here, which is a highway. It's got, you know, it's not a freeway. It's got stoplights and whatnot, 40, 45 miles an hour. But um, that's another highway that runs through the north side of Seattle here. Um, what's really popular on this side of north side of Seattle is there's a lot of parks and a lot of things to do. So Green Lake Park right here, one of the most popular spots. Um, it's a little lake. You're not taking the boat out here, but you can take out a, a, a kayak or a paddleboard. They actually have spots here at the park where you can rent that kind of stuff. Uh, I've, I've gone here countless times growing up. There's a loop around this entire lake 
uh, a paved loop so you can, I think it's 2.8 miles I believe, I'd have to look that up to be sure, but I think it's 2.8 miles. Uh, you can ride your bike, go rollerblading, walk your dog, go for a run. You see all sorts of people doing that stuff around here. Green Lake also has basketball courts, uh, baseball fields, soccer fields, tennis courts, um, uh, playground area. So there's really a lot to do here in Green Lake. And then right next to Green Lake is Woodland Park Zoo. So this is our biggest zoo around here as well. So, you know, if you want to take the kids there, you want to just go yourself. Look at the animals. It's a really nice zoo. Again, been here countless times throughout my life taking my daughter now um, and then when I was a kid we'd take field trips here uh, at school so there's a lot to do here kind of in this Green Lake area and you'll see a lot of homes a lot of residential living all throughout here all of this Finney Ridge, Meridian, West Woodland, Witter Heights, uh, Roosevelt all of this is uh, residential living opportunities in here um, so you've got quick access to everything if you're going to be living in this area there's a lot of older homes some of this uh, these homes are on hills, so you might have some basement homes, things like that. Um, but, you know, Seattle in general, you're going to have older homes, not nearly as much new construction. Now, there is some here and there, but large majority of the homes in the Seattle area are going to be older homes. A lot of 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s homes throughout these areas. So zooming back out a little bit, you can see all these neighborhoods we've got in here, um, like Maple Leaf and like Greenwood, uh, like Ballard is over here. Uh, you've got Golden Gardens Park right here. Uh, this is another uh, beach park, uh, so right on the Puget Sound. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool park to go to, big grassy field, big beachy area. Um, so that's a very, very popular spot. So this is kind of the north side of Seattle here and what you're going to find there. And then you've got University of Washington right here. So um, if, if you're coming over here to go to school, something like that, that's where you're going to be, University of Washington, right here on the north side of Seattle. So as we head... Um, further south into Seattle. Right here is South Lake Union. So just north of downtown, South Lake Union is uh, Amazon headquarters. So if you're coming over here for an Amazon job, this might be where you're at if you're at the main facility here. So you've got that all right in here. So here in the South Lake Union area, you've got plenty of residential living as well. You've got condos, you've got townhouses, apartments, all of that is right in here. There's a lot of people that um, you know, use public transportation or bike or walk to work around here so they don't necessarily have a car. Some people still, of course, have a car here, but um, there's there's that opportunity to live in this area. If you're also working in this area, you're taking a tech job or somewhere around this area, some type of job around this area where you might be able to have, you know, some walkability. Um, and then you've got the Space Needle here in the Queen Anne area. And then as you go up here in Queen Anne, this is all residential living all throughout here in Queen Anne. And then you keep going up north to Magnolia here. Magnolia is going to feel a little bit more, you know, kind of suburban, that subdivision type feel a little bit more. Again, going to be older homes, a lot of 30s, 40s, 50s homes. Um, but it's not going to feel quite as busy as you are down here in South Lake Union where all the hustle and bustle is. Uh, you're, of course, still really close. If you're somebody that's taking a job maybe at Amazon here in South Lake Union, but you don't want to live in the middle of the hustle and bustle, but you also don't want a very long commute to work, Magnolia might be a good spot to check out. Um, you know, you can find some homes in the in the mid one and a half, you know, mid one millions, one and a half million, two million, depending on what you want, you know, bigger homes, views, you can have homes with views in Magnolia here. So um, you could find homes right around a million on the cheaper end uh, for some smaller homes. So opportunities for all of that right in here. And then of course, downtown Seattle right here with Pike Place Market. I'm sure you've heard of Pike Place Market before, a huge uh, farmer's market that operates seven days a week. And then you've got the aquarium down here. You've got the Seattle Pier down here. So you've got the, like, the Ferris wheel and some restaurants down here. Uh, it's a nice place to go spend the day and hang out. It's kind of cool down there. Um, and then uh, just over here on the uh, sorry, east side of, of kind of South Lake Union, you've got Capitol Hill, Miller Park, Madrona. These are all residential living areas you've got parks all around things like that so that's the main seattle area for you as you start going further down south here in seattle and i'm just going to stay on the west side right right now and then i'll skip over to the east side over here after this so just kind of staying consistent here with the west side so as you go further south you've got west seattle um right over here you can see that right here what, what's a pain right now is, is trying to get to west seattle the west seattle bridge is being worked on so you know, traffic getting over here is pretty terrible. It's still pretty close to Seattle, but it's pretty terrible to get over there right now with traffic. Um, but there's some nice homes and neighborhoods in there. You've got Alakai Beach, which is another really popular uh, park with some great views over the Puget Sound. So 
Again, if you want a neighborhood with a lot of homes that have views, West Seattle is another neighborhood like that where you can get some great views of the Puget Sound area. Um, as you start going further south, there's still plenty of residential living here in Seattle. You've got Beacon Hill, you've got Georgetown and Columbia City. There's a lot of homes in here. Again, older homes. You're in Seattle. You're going to, on the majority, have older homes. There are some newer ones, though. I showed, showed a, a home the other day that was 2014 build here in uh, the Columbia City area. So there's still some options for some newer construction homes in here. Um, but majority is going to be some older homes. As you start going um, further south here, this is where your airport is. So this is SeaTac Airport. So if you're somebody that's traveling a lot, you're going in and out, in and out, going on work trips, whatever the case is, this is our main airport right here is SeaTac. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see Seattle right here. You've got SeaTac right here. So, you know, depending on what time of day you go, 20, 30 minutes from the Seattle, downtown Seattle area. So it's not too bad. Could be a little bit longer with some really bad traffic, but it's not bad at all. Um, but that's just so you know, point of reference, that's where your airport's going to be. Now, some of these cities right in here are going to be cheaper areas to live rather than Seattle. For one reason, you're not in Seattle. You're not as convenient to the jobs in downtown Seattle in that South Lake Union area. But also, you're closer to the airport. So you're going to have some, you might have some airplane noise in some of these neighborhoods and whatnot. Um, but these areas right in here, Tukwila and Kent and Des Moines and Burien, you know, your median home prices are going to be in the mid fives to mid 600s. So 550 to 650 it's kind of a good range right now. This is, you know, what, what month am I in? April of 2022. Um, so if you're watching this in a year, those prices are likely changed. So as of right now, 550, 650, somewhere in there for these medium prices in these cities, relatively close to the airport. And that's the cheaper end. That's what you're going to find here, the cheaper side of what you're going to find here in the Seattle metro area. Most areas are going to be more expensive. So as you get down in, in here to Federal Way again, you're going to be in the mid 500s for median home prices right now. I've got a client right now. We're, we're selling a house for them. They're moving up north. Three bedroom, 1500 square foot house, relatively newly updated, newer kitchen and whatnot, selling for 555. Um, so that's to stay in King County. That's about as cheap as you're going to get is that, is that Federal Way, Auburn area, uh, the, the Tukwila area as well. Um, so that's kind of what you're going to be dealing with. If you're looking for home prices here in the South King County area, that's kind of what you're going to be feeling out five, 600,000 in that range. So that is the Southern tip of, of, uh, King County right there. So let's zoom back out a little bit. All right, zoom, hang on with me, zoom back out. So I started in Shoreline, just stayed on the West side, went all the way down here to Federal Way. Let's go to the Eastern side of King County here. Let's go to Bothell right here. So Bothell is an area that's growing a lot right now. What's unique about Bothell is it, it's split in half between King County and Snohomish County. So down here on the South side of Bothell, it is King County. Up here, this is also Bothell up here, Canyon Park area up here, this is Snohomish County. So Bothell as a whole, very popular area. It's got a, a well-rated school district, North Shore School District. Again, school districts are split in half. South side of Bothell is North Shore School District. Uh, north side of Bothell is Everett School District. So just keep that in mind if you're uh, moving to the Bothell area. Right here, you've got Totem Lake. Uh, this is the shopping center. So like Ross and, and uh, natural grocery stores uh, are here in this uh, Totem Lake area. You're really close to Woodenville right here, Woodenville, Snohomish County, but Woodenville, there's a lot of wineries in Woodenville and whatnot. So um, there's, there's some really nice living opportunities out there as well to kind of be in a really wooded neighborhood, um, get some, some more property. So you can find that here in kind of the Bothell merging into Woodenville area if you want, you know, larger pieces of land, you want half an acre, an acre, you can find some of that around here in these areas. Um, some a lot of new construction has gone on here in Bothell as well the last five to ten years a lot of new homes have gone in here just to support the demand part of that is because it's you know proximity to uh, Redmond which is where Microsoft headquarters are we'll get to that here shortly to Redmond um, but a lot of people have moved here to Bothell to have quick access to that and get a little bit more bang for their buck so median prices in Bothell right now have just uh, right around a million I think they've just hit over a million for median prices in the Bothell area so you're going to pay to live here, but it's a very, very nice area to live. I grew up very close to Bothell. I grew up right here in Briar, this is Snohomish County, but I grew up pretty close to Bothell here. And then you've got uh, University of Washington campus over here as well. This is the Bothell campus. As we go down south, now we're getting into Kirkland. So Kirkland is right here, and it expands all the way up here. 
So this is the Juanita area of Kirkland right here. So you've got Juanita Beach Park, um, which is a really cool place to go. Um, if, if you want to take the kids, uh, there's a big swing set there. There's tennis courts. There is, you know, places to go swimming, the swimming area, go fishing, things like that. So a uh, really cool area there on the north side of Kirkland in Juanita. And then as we go down south here to the main downtown Kirkland area, you've got Marina Beach Park down here. Um, again, another park we can go swimming and whatnot down there. You take out a kayak or a paddleboard, something like that. And then you've got downtown Kirkland, which is super walkable. Um, so there's a lot of different, uh, you know, boutiques and restaurants, coffee shops, things down here. There's apartments down here, condos. So if you want to live somewhere super walkable uh, to go, you know, get a bite to eat and to go get your coffee and whatnot, uh, Kirkland is a good spot for that. Um, zoom back out here. There's a lot of uh, zoom back out here. So there's a lot of residential living here, obviously in Kirkland as well. Kirkland's a, getting to be a very expensive place to live. Median prices are over 1.5. I think they're probably closer to 1.6 million at this point. Um, so you're going to pay to live here. Reason for that is just proximity to um, great jobs. And then this Kirkland, really this whole east side area, you're talking Kirkland and Bellevue. This whole east side area is a very, very clean area to live. It's going to feel pretty different than Seattle. When you're going over to the Seattle area, you're going to see a good amount of, you know, tent cities, the homeless stuff, all that comes with that. You might see some needles on the ground. Um, you're going to see, you know, trash on some of the streets, depending exactly where in Seattle you are. Not every neighborhood in Seattle is going to be like that, but some definitely some spots in Seattle as you're, you're closer to the freeways are going to be like that. Versus over here on the east side, you, you hardly see any kind of that stuff. Um, they just don't really put up with it over here. And it's it's a very nice and clean area to live. Uh, they've also got some of the highest rated school districts in the state. Really the highest school districts rated in the state are here on the east side uh, of the Seattle area. So we were in Kirkland right there. It's neighbor to the west, or neighbor to the east, sorry, is Redmond right here. So Redmond is where uh, Microsoft is. So you've got Microsoft headquarters down here. So if you're coming over here to take a job from Microsoft, that's where you're going to be working. Unless you're working from home and don't have to go into the office. But um, you've got Redmond right here. So you've got the town center. So you've got some restaurants, a little kind of mall over there. Um, it's a little walkable over there. Not quite like Kirkland, but um, it's a cool area to go. You've got some great neighbors like uh, Education Hill here in Redmond. Um, uh, Southeast Redmond side over here by Marymore Park. This is a really cool park down here right on the lake. So they've got, um, you know, I played soccer here as a kid at Marymore Park. So they've got a lot of events here. They do like movie nights in the park. We can uh, break out a picnic basket and, and lay on the lawn and watch a movie. They've got a really cool dog park, off-leash dog park here at Marymore Park where the dogs can jump in and go in the water here. Um, so it's a really cool spot to spend a nice sunny day. And it's right on Lake Sammamish, like I said. So good access, quick access to that. As we keep going down south here in Kirkland, you've got Bridal Trails area. So you'll see some equestrian uh, homes here in the Bridal Trails area, uh, people that own horses and, and whatnot. So you, you've got some opportunities for homes really here in the Redmond area. You've got opportunities for homes that are on an acre, maybe two acres, things like that. So if you're wanting something with a little more property, you can definitely do that, especially as you get out to here to Union Hill, Novelty Hill, this area out here, you've got some of that as well. So we keep going down south here. We've got Bellevue right here. So Bellevue is, uh, you know, where Jeff Bezos lives, which is the CEO of uh, Amazon. Um, there's a lot of money in Bellevue. Very wealthy area. There's a lot of really nice, you know, high-end restaurants around here, some high-end stores. They've got the uh, Bellevue Town Square, which is a mall. So even all your regular stores like H&M and Zara and Gap, all that kind of stuff, you can find that it's not all just high-end stores. So you've got a wide variety of stuff here in Bellevue. Um, so the downtown area is a pretty cool area to go for the day. If you need to go shopping, get some food, things like that, you can walk around. Um, zoom back out. Clyde Hill, Medina, two of the most expensive neighborhoods in this entire, probably in, really in the entire state of Washington. Very expensive neighborhoods. You've got some homes with some great views of the lake, um, but a lot, of, a lot of newer homes that have been built here as well, tearing down some older homes, building some new construction, four to five to 6,000 square foot homes. So one you know very expensive places to live through here in Medina and Clyde Hill but some beautiful beautiful neighborhoods as well going back out you got to the east side of Bellevue over here on the east side of 405 like Lake Hills um, you've got plenty of neighborhoods all throughout here um, to you know 
subdivision living, typical suburban feel here um, on the east side of Bellevue, the crossroads area and whatnot. And you're still close and convenient access to everything. All the jobs that are offered in Bellevue and Redmond here. Um, so you're nice and close to everything. You got T-Mobile headquarters down here. So this is the Factoria area of Bellevue. Um, so you've got some more shopping down here, residential living all throughout here. You, really in throughout the entire Bellevue area, there's lots of condos and townhomes as well. So if that's, if you want to live in Bellevue, you don't have, you know, $1.6 million to buy a house, um, you can, you can buy a condo. You can buy a condo in Bellevue for 400,000, 500,000, just depending on what you want. But there's options as cheap as that for condos here in Bellevue, closer to 500. Zooming back out. So going over here, we've got Sammamish and Issaquah right here. Again, two very, very popular places. Again, very expensive, similar to Bellevue. You're talking a million and a half or more, 1.6 million closer to for median prices right now in these areas. Some new construction going on in Sammamish. Um, again, people taking jobs over here on the east side, taking jobs at Microsoft in Redmond or, or, or another company in Bellevue. Um, and they're, they're moving right in here to Sammamish. So beautiful neighborhoods, some beautiful homes, some homes with views of the lake, some homes right on the lake, um, and, and just a great place to live, that's for sure. Highly rated school districts, um, so it's a really cool area. Same thing with Issaquah, very, very similar. It's gonna be a very similar feel to Sammamish um, as you start to go further east. You've got some homes up here in, in Cougar Mountain and in Tiger Mountain. You've got neighborhoods wound up through here that are really nice places to live, very wooded. You can get you know, acre, two acre lots. As you go further out, you can get five acre lots. Um, so if that's something you're looking for, you can find that out here for sure. So zoom back out a little bit. As you go even further east, we're talking Duval and Novelty and Carnation and Fall City, you're gonna feel a little bit more rural. It's not that far out, really. If you're living in Duval, going into Redmond for work, if you're working at Microsoft, that's not that far of a commute. And in Duval, you can find 10 acres, 20 acres, if that's what you want. Um, gonna feel a little bit more rural. There's not as much of, of the day-to-day -day conveniences in Duval or some of these cities that you might need, doctor's offices, big grocery stores, so you'll go into Redmond or Sammamish for that kind of stuff. Um, but again, it's not too far and you can feel a little bit more rural. So if you want that rural feeling of living, you wanna feel pretty far out, but still not be too insanely far out, maybe check out Duval, Carnation, Fall City areas through there, that might be a good option for you. As you go south of Issaquah, we were in Issaquah here, as you go south, Maple Valley right here, this is another area that's growing a lot right now. Um, reason for that is just getting a lot more for your money than, than if you're living in Issaquah or Sammamish or Bellevue. You can come down here to Maple Valley, go a little bit further. It's still commutable distance. If you're working in Bellevue or Redmond, there's people that do it, um, but you get a lot more for your money. You, you know, the cities further north on the east side there, I was talking about median prices, 1.5 to 1.7 million. Maple Valley is still under a million. You're talking in the 800,000s for median home price quickly escalating, quickly, quickly escalating, because um, there's a lot of people moving there, but it's grown a lot. There's been a lot of new construction in the recent years. Um, it's got a really well-rated school district. It's it's up there with the, with the top when you look at all the uh, ratings on the uh, rating sites and things like that. It's got a well-rated school district, some newer schools. You've got all the conveniences you need, the doctor's offices, the shopping. Um, you've got you know your Fred Meyer and Safeway right here. Those are your grocery stores. A lot of great neighborhoods through here. I mentioned a lot of new construction, but there's some older homes. There's homes on acreage. So again, if you want five acres, you want one acre, you can find that in Maple Valley. Um, Ravensdale as well down here. So Maple Valley is an area that's grown a lot, a lot right now. Lake Wilderness Park is a, you know, gets pretty busy on the weekends, the nice days, a little lake. Uh, it's a small lake, um, but there's big grassy fields. So you could have a picnic, you could play volleyball, kick the soccer ball take the kids out, play on the playground. There's all sorts of stuff you can do here at Lake Wilderness Park. So it's a, it's a really good spot to live. Um, and like I said, really popular. A lot of people are moving to it. Then as you merge back in to the west side here, you've got Covington, and it just brings you right back into the Auburn Federal Way area and back up north. So zooming back out here, and one thing I didn't mention about Issaquah, if you're somebody that likes outdoorsy activity, you want to go hiking, mountain biking, you want to go skiing and snowboarding, so you want good access, quick access to the mountain pass, well, that's that's easy to get to from here. So you've got Issaquah right here. So I-90, even from Bellevue, Bellevue or I-90 brings you from Bellevue 
all the way through here to Snoqualmie Pass. So if you want to go skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, things like that, Snoqualmie Pass is right here. It's going to be easy for you to get out there uh, if you're living in these areas, Sammamish, Issaquah, even Bellevue, Redmond. It's quick and easy to get out there. If that's something you enjoy is that, that recreation, that outdoor recreation, easy access to all of that stuff. So this, this really is, you know, the King County area as a whole. You've got Snohomish County to the north up here. I can do another video on that. You've got Pierce County to the south down here. Um, but King County offers, you know, a wide variety of different options for you. All right, so hopefully that map tour was helpful for you on, on some locations in, in the King County area. What, you know, a good spot for you to move to might be. You know, just to summarize, like I mentioned, the east side, the Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond areas, that's going to be your your most expensive area. Your some really high paying jobs, some really nice, clean, beautiful neighborhoods. You're going to have some luxury homes in there. On the west side in Seattle, you've got a wide variety. You've got a lot of older homes. You've got some newer homes. You've got very urban type living. You've got some still some suburban type living. And then south of Seattle on that I-5 side, you've got some cheaper options in the you know mid 500s to mid 600s for median home prices in those areas, some cheaper living options. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what it might be like to live here. Like I said, if you're moving over here, you're looking to buy a home, feel free to reach out to me. I'm an active real estate agent here in the Seattle metro area. Happy to guide you through that process. Hopefully make that move over here a little bit easier for you, but I appreciate you watching this video.